Uh, my name is Simon Brown, Just One Lab founder. I'm going to be chatting to uh, what Christia will colloquially call our tax owls, uh, which I suppose they are. Truthfully, it is uh, Peter Janssen von Rensburg and Devet de Villiers from AJM Tax, who are tax owls, but more importantly, perhaps, is they are tax boffins, and that's why we've got them in today. They, on our blog today, uh, Tax Tuesday, just published around the, <clears throat> the relief we're getting from SARS in, in terms of tax due to uh, COVID-19, uh, three key areas it's going to be focusing on. One, interestingly, is actually an old uh, provision which has been around before, well, for a while, but uh, I suspect just simply hasn't. Uh, a lot of people probably don't know it. Uh, David Peter, really appreciate the time. Let's kick off with employment tax incentive. This is an older scheme that really is there and has been there for a while to encourage uh, smaller businesses to employ mostly youth, uh, and, and you know, the cap is six and a half thousand. And what SARS is now doing is extending the program and, and also the age, pushing it through to 65. Uh, Peter. Yeah, so that's right. The employment tax incentive came in around uh, 2013, 2014, and exactly for the reason that you mentioned, um, for the, for, for really for, for employees to be encouraged to employ, um, to employ the youth. And it's essentially a cost sharing mechanism between, between government and employees. So listen, you are going to the trouble to employing people, um, upskilling and um, creating job opportunities. And we will meet you halfway and carry a portion of that, of that tax liability, essentially. So as part of the COVID-19 um, provisions that the whole employment tax incentive has, has gotten some new life blown into it. Um, yeah, we've sort of gotten the feeling over the last couple of years that even though the program is there, it's been put on the back burner a little bit and not much attention has been paid to it. But suddenly, since everybody's in, in a bit of a crisis now um, and there is some, some relief granted there, uh, it, appears, it appears to be gaining some traction again. So what effectively has been done is that the um, for, for qualifying employees, as it currently stands, um, within the first 12 months of employment, um, there's an incentive um, that you get. And in the second 12 months, the incentive um, uh, goes down a little bit. Um, so what government has done now is saying, listen, for, for both of those levels, within the first 12 months, where you get a thousand rand incentive, we're pushing that up by 500 rand. Um, a month and the same with the, with the second level and the, what they've also done and you've alluded to that is that they um, because the incentive is currently um, for, for youth employment 18 to 29 year olds so that, listen irrespective of the um, of the age gap even until um, 65 we're giving guys that that wouldn't have qualified under the scheme we're giving the 500 bucks a month uh, additional just for some uh, for some reprieve there um, so and then that so 500 uh, bucks is going to the company for them to does it go to the company or to the individual um, the employment tax um, incentive works through the pay as you earn system, so it'll come back to the company, which will then be in in in, in a position to to repay the employees. Very much similar to what um, what we've seen with the UIF now, where traditionally in, um, individual employees would approach the UIF and they get their money directly from the UIF. Um, because we're in such a crisis situation, um, there simply just isn't time to process all of that on an individual basis. Um, so what government's done there as well is said, listen. Mr. Employer, in a designated bank account, we will pay you the UIF claim and it's the responsibilities on you to go and then further on distribute that to your employees. To vet a qualifying company, and I assume obviously they've got to be in good standing with SARS and, and you know, that's just a given. Are there restrictions on the size of the company, perhaps turnover limitations or perhaps number of staff that you have? Or is it fairly wide that if, you know, if you're employing the youth and, and now across the, 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 the range, uh, you, can, you can apply for this? Um, on, the, on the ETI incentives, there's no actual restrictions on that. Some of the, they have imposed restrictions on the other relief mechanisms granted. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge often with ETIs is so the whole idea with the ETI was for smaller businesses to effectively employ people because we all know that that's where sort of we're going to grow in this economy. The challenge typically is smaller businesses don't need more individuals. So um, especially since 2017 when um, Pres President Cyril Ramaphosa um, announced the YES initiative or the Youth Employment Service Initiative, we've seen a lot of further lifeblood blown into this ETI as well because what effectively has started to happen is is smaller businesses that necessarily don't need more people and even bigger businesses have effectively put up funds for other SMEs to use and employ those individuals in their businesses. Um, so no real cap on the businesses, good, um, good standing and tax clearance certificates needed, but sometimes the smaller businesses 
can't employ people because they just don't need more hands. So they, some people have found some innovative ways around utilizing the system to create employment in South Africa. Yeah, I've looked at it from time to time and, you know, it just one laps a lean ship uh, and I would love to employ youth. It's, you know, if we don't have offices and, and, and you know, it's Christia and I and then some freelancers and it's always been a, a kind of how do they fit in? And I suppose also as a small business, we're so busy, you know, maybe if I'd sort of sat down and given it more thought, but there's, you know, for a small business owner, you've always got a list as, as long as your arm of things to give uh, thought to. Let's move to provisional tax, because I think there, there are a lot of our community out there who are provisional taxpayers. Now, that distinction, uh, and Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, if I've, if I've got a job, it's an eight to five, I work somewhere and I get a single paycheck, then I'm PAYE. We'll touch on that in a second. But if I'm a freelancer, if I'm doing, you know, getting income from multiple different sources, then I'm sitting in a provisional tax space um, and I'm not paying my tax monthly. Uh, and, and there's some exceptions if I get a majority of income from one uh, particular supplier and the like. But broadly, it's I'm not paying my tax monthly. Uh, I pay a couple of times a year. Exactly that, Simon. Um, provisional tax is essentially a cash flow mechanism for SARS. Um, normal salaried employees, they get deducted, um, pays you in on a monthly basis. So SARS has a continuous cash flow on their side. Um, whereas where you operate a business, or do freelancing or commission work, SARS doesn't necessarily have that income. But they're saying, listen, we need to somehow manage the cash flow and we need to um, treat all taxpayers equally and everybody has to, to keep this, this uh, machine oiled. So how the system usually works is that you have, when you are a, register, uh, when you are a provisional taxpayer, you have two payments a year, um, six months before, your, um, for, before the end of your year assessment, you go and uh, take a view on what your taxable income will be for the entire year. So the bit of a perspective view of well, so you have to essentially guess, estimate what your um, total taxable income for the year will be. And then um, six months before that year end, you pay half of that. And when you get your year end, um, year end calculation for, for natural persons, usually in February, uh, exactly the same. Again, just with newer information, you have a little bit more, well, 12 months um, have gone now, and you know more or less what your tax bill is going to be. And then it's a top-up payment um, for that you, that you take your total taxable income for the year of assessment into account, and then um, you, you, you pay that tax bill. So what they've done now is, and I'm, I'm not sure ex whether, whether the provisional tax system was perhaps the right way to do it, but I think uh, government's following international trends by, by allowing the, this deferral mechanism. So what um, so I was saying is an, instead of paying 50% of your um, of your taxes at the first round, six months before year end, you only have to do um, you only have to do 15% uh, um, now. And when we get to the um, second provisional payment, uh, let's top that up to 65% instead of the 100%. So they're effectively giving you 35% leeway, just a deferral mechanism. Very, very importantly, it's not a um, complete waiver of that provisional tax bill. It's merely just uh, interest-free loan, for lack of a better term. It's just a deferral of that payment um, that, you have to, uh, um, that you have to pay eventually. Usually, uh, six months after year end, you have a, uh, a voluntary third top of payment before interest starts accruing. And the way which they got um, going to collect this money now is say, listen, we're giving you for 35%, for we're giving you extension for, um, for those six months. But by the time your third provisional payment was usually due, you need to have caught up the entire 100% of, um, of, the, of the tax bill for the year. So they're effectively giving you six months interest-free loan in respect of 20% of your, of your pay as you earn. That's more or less what we've seen in the international trend, especially in Europe, we've seen that um, coming through. So I think, um, I think it's just um, merely um, following international trends, what they're doing there. And it, it, it makes sense, particularly, you know, and I want to come to dates in a moment, but it, it's a little hard to get visibility right now on what you are going to be earning going down the line. Uh, if I understand <clears throat> correct, for, and this is going to be for the February next year, because we've already passed the last tax deadline. In other words, that money will be due in August. So that relief is, is, is quite chunky. You know, it's, as you say, essentially a 35% interest-free loan, but it's only going to be coming in in about four months' time, three and a half months. Yeah, exactly that. They, um, the, it's, the, the mechanism is quite complex. Um, it's, it's a, we're sitting with, um, in South Africa with a, with a, with a tax system and with rules that's made for a first world um, country, but we're sitting with a third world economy. And especially the type of businesses that you that you're trying to help through this um, through this deferral mechanism are guys that don't necessarily um, pay so much attention to the detail that's involved with provisional tax. So um, 
and so, so the system is a little bit complicated now I've just um, jotted down some notes because you have to really get into the detail but um, essentially for um, for first provisional payments from, um, from April from April this year up until September that's the qualifying window for first provisional and then for second provisional that ends anywhere between um, the 1st of April that's passed now and the 31st of March next year so those are your two windows if your first provisional payment uh, falls within the uh, the April to 30 September slot and your second provisional payment falls into the April to 31 March 2020 slot that's when you get the relief um, for the 15 percent and the 35 percent uh, um, 65 percent respectively yeah look I mean provisional tax is always complex my view is Everyone I know who's on provisional tax has an accountant do it because uh, this isn't PAYE. This is the real McCoy. You, this is one place you absolutely need expert. Yeah. David, let's come back to you. PAYE, this is the tax which a, an average salaried worker will have deducted off their salary every month. It just somehow it disappears. You earn X in theory, but you receive Y because your pension goes off, your, your medical aid goes off, and of course your PAYE, your UIF, all of those disappear off to SARS. This happens on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, Devet, they, they're giving us some relief in that space as well. Yes, effectively, um, what government has said is that they'll give us a 20% deferral again. So if, if your pay as you earn bill is 100, um, you only have to pay over 80 now. The other 20, they'll collect at a later stage. Again, important to uh, just for everyone to be aware that all of this is it's a deferral. Um, you will have to pay that, that bill at the end of the day. And again, the, the pay as you earn relief is not to the uh, taxpayer, so not to the employee, but it's actually for the employer's benefit. I think the thinking around this um, deferral and also the additional um, pay as you earn credits in terms of the employment tax incentive is just to have cash flow in the hands of the employer over the next four to six months to effectively decide how best for them to keep their operation alive. Yeah, and that's a great point. This is not a gift from SARS. None of this, well, I mean, the first one, the, the, the ETI, Employment Tax Incentive, is a bit of a gift from SARS. Both the provisional tax and the PAYE is just really helping individuals with cash flow. And I, mean, I absolutely get, I mean, I see how that does help. The PAYE, if I understand correctly, Devet, I'm only going to get that for, for four months. I mean, obviously, SARS can change that at time, but currently it's only going to be a, a four-month process where essentially my, the take-home will be a little sweeter, perhaps. Yeah. So on both the, the ETI and on the page deferrals, it's only for four months. Um, and also something to mention on the ETI, the claims weren't normally processed every month. So I think there were suggestions that they're going to process those claims on a more regular basis as well. So I think what they've said, let's, let's give this relief for four months, see where we are in four months, and then decide if we want to um, continue with this or not. At that stage, it would probably be easy for, for um, SARS just to say, just extend the, the four-month period because the regulations are already an issue, um, then trying to then rehash them at that stage. That's a good point. In, in four months' time, we'll know more. Our visibility right now is quite, quite stretched. In four months, we'll, we'll know something, etc. Peter, for, for the for the uh, PAYE, fairly simple process. I assume if you're a PAYE payer, go speak to your HR department. You know, chat to them. For the other two peeps, they, 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 I mean, my advice would be go speak to an accountant. Speak to you guys. Put something on on our Facebook page. Or if you have an existing accountant, uh, chat to your accountant about them. Some, absolutely, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, for the simple reason being, it is complex. The, um, even though we're trying to help the people, it is a quite complex system that we're trying to help them. And I unfortunately foresee that there's going to be some conflict between the theory. The theory is that we are granting you this relief over the next um, couple of months. And practice was SARS systems, the actual e-filing system, although it's a great system, it's um, it's ones and noughts. It's a system built to generate, um, to to trigger certain transactions on the occurral of certain events. So when you um, either pay late or pay short, then all these entries start running automatically off a statement of account. There's not a person at SARS sitting and clicking buttons, um, leaving those penalties. It's an automatic process that takes place. And because all of this is such a rush, and, and credit to them absolutely for the work that they've done and um, what they've put in, they, they had limited, limited time to do all of this. But I'm not convinced that the IT systems running in the background will already be geared to accommodate for all of this. So I'm quite certain that, especially on the first round, um, even though you're going to qualify for the relief, automatic penalties and interest are going to be levied. And then you're automatically in a dispute resolution process. You're not going to have somebody at SARS sitting and saying, ah, okay, listen, sorry, um, there was this relief available. Let's waive these penalties and interest. I think it's going to be a case where you're going to be automatically in a dispute resolution process that you have to manage properly. And it's a, 
listen, with reference to X, Y, and Z and the relief being granted, um, we require remission of this, that, and the other. Um, so it's, uh, although we're on the one hand, um, and, and kudos for the, for the in initiatives, we, we, we're, we're trying to help people. I think practically our systems are just currently set up in such a way um, that, that we're gonna run into some, some issues. So um, back to your point, absolutely um, approach somebody that it can be done in a correct, um, correct way and structured way so that we know this is, um, the, these are the, um, the relief mechanisms that we're entitled to. And if it comes down to it, this is, our, uh, this is going to be our approach. If penalties and interest in all of the rest get levied automatically. So that's gonna be very, very important to manage this, this whole relief system or mechanism that we allow on people. Yeah, I take your point. A great initiative, speedily done. Government is moving at speed we haven't seen, but the practicality might take some catching up. Yeah. Um, and I like your idea, you know, almost in a sense, anticipating that dispute process. So you've Absolutely. got your ducks in a row so that when and if it does happen, you can say, well, you know, here, here, and and, and here. Uh, gents, really appreciate the time. Uh, I think hugely useful for, for, for a bunch of our users. Um, the video is on Facebook. I'm going to put it onto YouTube. I'll embed it in the, the post as well. Uh, Peter Janssen von Rensburg, uh, uh, and of course, Devette de Villiers, AJM Tax. You find them, agmtax.coza. You find them on the Fat Wallet. Uh, they're on some of the socials as well. Uh, gents, have a great day further and uh, stay safe. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Cool. We're off. Thanks, guys. Hello.